We are at the Museo de Arte de Puerto Rico in San Juan, and this is Pepon Osorio's En la Barbaria No Se Llora, No Crying Allowed in the Barbershop from 1994. Osorio was actually born here, and in 1975, at the age of 20, he moved to New York. Pepon Osorio worked as a social worker in New York, and there he immersed himself in the New Yorican community. And a lot of his work comes from his relationship with that community, wanting to speak to them directly and also involve them in this type of installation. In this installation, we find objects and images that relate both to the New Yorican community and to Puerto Rico itself. He lines the walls with rim covers that reference the important car culture in both New Yorican communities and in Puerto Rico. We find the flag of Puerto Rico also embedded into the barber chairs. We find references like that blown up tattoo that spells perdoname madre, forgive me mother, and all of these elements allude to a particular masculine aesthetic that we find in the New Yorican community, the Puerto Rican community, and perhaps in Latino communities at large. As soon as I cross the threshold of the room, we go from a stone floor into this black and white tiled floor. I see wooden chairs covered in red velvet, a pool table, and then beyond that, the barber chairs and the stations for the barbers to do their work. And yet, there are so many things that in my mind don't belong in a barber shop or that speak to how Osorio is trying to challenge our understanding of the barber shop. Elements like the pool table, the fake plans that adorn the installation transform the barber shop into a place to socialize, to express also culture in the context of the New Yorican community. We also find a life-size statue of St. Lazarus, who is syncretized in Santeria with the Yoruba Orisha Babaluaje. And this manifestation is related to health and illness. Osorio could also be hinting to the wider community, where we find the barbershop and maybe the botanica, maybe a bar where you will also play pool. Those places of socialization, culture, and belief in the case of the inclusion of the St. Lazarus statue. I really love the barber chairs. You see that at the base we have the flag of Puerto Rico. They are covered in what looks like red velvet, but then they are encrusted with all of these other things. I see plastic toys, dolls and figurines, little straw hats, fake plants that almost seem to grow from the chair itself. And then, as I imagine myself moving to sit down, I see a small television screen playing a video right where my head would be, and then imprinted on each of the chairs is an image of a nude male body from the neck down. It makes you imagine sitting on that naked body but also becoming that vulnerable naked body. We are in a barber chair where we let another person do our hair, shave our beards, and we become very vulnerable. The barber shop leads us to that notion of sharing your woes with your barber. And Rosario himself has talked about how when he was five, his father took him to the barber shop to get his hair cut for the first time and how it was a rather traumatic experience. And he started to cry, but of course, you're not allowed to cry in the barber shop because this is a rite of passage into manhood. And so the idea that this is also a space where masculinity is supposed to be not only on display, but reinforced was one that he felt very personally. The idea of masculinity and of manhood is reference in so many of the elements and imagery that we find in the installation. Along with those rim covers in the walls, we also find images of famous Puerto Ricans and Latinos, including baseball players, all of them, men, this use of images like hands and naked bodies in what can be easily read as a hypermasculine place and of male socialization is very interesting. It may address anxieties and notions of homophobia inside the New Yorican, Puerto Rican, and the Latino community at large. Osorio describes his artistic practice as one defined by contradiction. The flower on the wall that's a tattoo that's blown up into big proportions. I find very interesting how he added screens to the mirrors. After you spend your time in the barber, you are then swiveled to look at yourself and approve of what they've done. But in the manner in which Osorio has manipulated the mirror, the person sitting in that barber chair would be confronted with scenes of emotion, of men crying 
crying, of exhibiting that emotion that contradicts that notion that men don't cry, that boys don't cry. So he's confronting or pushing against that notion of a macho man who cannot express his emotion in a place that seems to socialize you to be that way, to repress your emotions. But it is a place of socialization, of cultural expression. And the more you look into it, the more you observe and reflect, you continue to explore those layers of complexity in both cultural expression and gender expression inside the Latino community. Another important sensory element in the installation is the music. <laughs> listening to our classic salsa songs that are also quite associated with a certain ideal of masculinity. This was not created for a traditional museum space. So he's really pushing the boundaries of not only what is art, but where do we find art and who is it for? Big interest of Osorio is being as close as possible to the community. So when this installation was first exhibited in Hartford, Connecticut, it was in a building that cater to the illusion that you were entering a real barber shop. And so that interest of involving the community in the creation and experiencing the installation is very important in his work. The way he transforms the barber shop, not only with all these objects that we have pointed out, but also including fake plants that add an element of coziness, that hint to that socialization that happens in the barber shop. So he truly wants you to reflect upon how the space, once practical, becomes transformed to be able to communicate so many messages. 